Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to try to show you guys how to set up farming inside of Godot for a 2D game. So I'm going to be basing this tutorial a little bit off of some scripts I wrote in a previous one, so I'll link that video if you want to go check that out. Otherwise, I'll try to retouch on the same scripts as we add new ones to this tutorial. So to set up the scenes for farming, we're going to need some Pixar, of course. So one of the differences between a growable organic object such as a corn stalk and something else like a building is that the corn is going to go through stages as it ages over time so you would generally plant seeds in some kind of farming sim and it would go through different stages until it reaches its adult stage and then becomes harvestable and then you can go between being harvestable and unharvestable if you have a multi-harvest plant so just keep that in mind when you're either grabbing pixar or making your own um, one pack you could try for this would be uh, Buttery Milk's Farm Pack on itch.io. So that has a free version you can use to follow along this tutorial. And I'll also put these sprites I pixeled the other day onto uh, Patreon and Ko-Fi as well, along with the scripts for the video if you want to just download that instead. Okay, so let's get started here by creating some 2D scenes that are going to cover the different stages of the corn's evolution. So I'm going to create a new 2D scene, and then we're going to apply a sprite for it. So this will be for the corn seeds. So let's add in a sprite 2D node. And for texture, I'll grab the atlas texture that I was just showing a moment ago. And with this selected, I'll hit Edit Region to choose the exact sprite out of this that I want to use. So the first stage of planting your plants is going to be, of course, having seeds that you put in the ground. So let's grab the seed sprites. We can rename the node to be Corn Seeds or something like that. And I'll save this into a new folder. So I have a folder for objects in this project. So I'll do objects and let's create a farming folder. And inside of here, I'll just save the cornseeds.tscn. So the next thing I'm going to do with this is retype the root node to be a area 2D. So a area 2D allows you to define a collision shape that isn't used for physical collision, as you would have an object bump into it. An object that only has an area 2D can be walked over, but you can have events to trigger with it. And you can also use it for special collision checks like a, like a shape cast 2D. So I'm going to add in a collision shape here. So let's add a collision shape 2D. And this collision shape 2D is a rectangle shape. So inside of here, I want this to fit one square. So in this project, I'm using 16 by 16 grid spaces. And uh, I have another plugin that I wrote called Grid Builder, which places objects onto grid spaces. So that isn't required here, but if you do want to put objects into your scene, uh, that plugin, which I will link down below, is uh, very helpful for doing that, of course. So I will put in 16 by 16 for the space, so the seeds take up one grid space. Makes sense for a tile map game. But I don't want this to be a normal collision, so I'm going to go into the collision area of Area 2D, and I'm going to change the layer from, well, default one ground layer, to layer 10, which I have set as unbuildable. So one thing you can do in your game is as you add objects to your scene, you can not have collision with an object because corn seeds you would expect you'd be able to walk over it, but you can mark the tile unbuildable so you can't just place objects on top of a tile that also has corn seeds under it. So instead of using the ground layer for physical collision, I'm gonna use the layer 10, which I've defined as unbuildable. So I'll just change the layer from 1 to 10. And the mask, we don't really need that because this is only going to be used by other objects to check if there's the seeds there. The, uh, the corn seeds itself is not checking for anything else in the square, at least not currently. So I'll just disable the mask. Okay, so let's expand in the folder. I'll go into farming and I'm going to duplicate this corn seed scene and I'll say corn growth one or growth underscore one. And I'm also going to duplicate this two more times. So I want growth stage two, and then we'll do growth stage three. If you wanted, uh, corn seeds could be renamed growth zero, if that makes more sense to you. So the reason we have three additional scenes here, but really we're going to have four because we're also going to have the harvestable version of growth three, is uh, we want to transform our original object into the next stage of its evolution. So seeds is going to turn into growth one, growth one is going to turn into growth two, growth two is going to turn into growth three, and growth three will be able to become harvestable uh, by swapping in the harvestable scene and swapping back out to growth three. 
So for coin growth one, let's rename the coin title up here to be, uh, let's say coin stage one, and we're gonna need to change the sprite. So using the same Atlas texture, let's edit the region and grab the next one over here. So I'm going to leave uh, the root node as an area 2D here. So we're still gonna mark this tile as unbuildable, but I'm gonna say that you can still walk across the coin at this point because it's just a sprout. And we can save that for right now and jump over to coin growth two. So this time we're going to change the sprite to the next one over again. So that's going to be, uh, I'll use this uh, sprite over here. So we're going to actually change the root node from an area 2D to be a uh, physics object. So let's rename this as uh, static body 2D. So now inside of the collision layers here, I want to add layer one back in. Now we might choose to make this um, unmarked as unbuildable because, well, at least with the way I have the grid building system set up, you would already have probably have collisions on the ground layer, but we can leave it marked as layer 10 here as well. Uh, since technically, even though it has collisions, it's also unbuildable. So now we want to take uh, the Sprite 2D here and I'm going to hit W to go to move mode and I'm going to move this up. Um, so I don't want snapping for right now. So let's turn that off. And I'll just pull this up to the top here. So if I zoom in, I'm basically going to center the sprite uh, right around there where we have the root of the stem uh, coming in right around the zero zero position in the scene. So if I enable the grid for a second, we can still see this collision shape is blocking this exact square. Um, we could just get away with leaving the collision shape like this if you prefer. Uh, for the sake of the physical collisions, you could change this to a different shape, like a circle. So if I go over to the shape size, uh, we could make this something like five. And maybe that makes more sense for the size of the corn. So if you prefer that, that's fine too. Um, so let's go to corn growth three and pretty much do the same thing. Uh, so actually, let's delete corn growth three. And I'm going to duplicate corn growth two to be the um, start of corn growth three. And now if we double click into here, we could just keep that collision shape and all we need to do is change the sprite. So uh, let's select with edit region. So we can uh, choose which one we want. I kind of like this version of the corn that I was making the other day a little bit better. So I'll just choose that. And then we might as well duplicate this in advance and call it a corn growth three harvestable. As long as it makes sense for you, it's fine. And so in this harvestable version, we'll change the sprite once again, and we're going to make it the one that actually has corn on it. So selecting right there. Okay, and that basically gives us the base of our scenes. And we'll also want to rename them. So we can say corn stage three harvestable. Then on this one, we can say just corn stage three over here, corn stage two, and we already renamed growth one to be corn stage one. So we have seeds, Stage one, stage two, stage three, and harvestable. So obviously in our tile map level, we could just take one of these and plop them in there and we would have a corn stock object of sorts, but it's not really gonna do anything. And we don't really have the aging mechanics added in for objects like farming. Um, now keep in mind, the aging stuff I'm about to show you, you could easily apply that to trees or other organic objects inside of your game world. Okay, so now inside of our corn seeds and also growth stages one and two, we're going to need to add a aging component script to these scenes so that our objects know when to change into their new forms. So I'm gonna right click on corn seeds, add a child node, and let's look for a base node, create, I'm going to rename this to be aging component. So this is going to have a script attached to it. Um, the reason you might use component nodes like this rather than stuffing everything into the original uh, parent script, the corn seeds, if we were going to get, make a corn seed script, is that we can have uh, very different functions separated into each of these individual components. And it just makes for better coding in general. Um, so that, for instance, if there was one function and corn seeds you really liked, you don't you don't have to copy the entire script over to uh, a different scene object for it to work. Uh, you can just copy what you need to other objects. So if you want an object to age, all you need is the aging component. You don't need the whole corn seeds script. Uh, but anyway, let's create a new script. I'm going to right click here and attach a script. It's going to be called aging component, but I'm going to make it lowercase here so aging underscore component dot gd 
and I'm going to put it not in farming, but in objects. So objects slash agent component dot GD. I think that's an okay place to put it because uh, other objects, once again, are going to be able to age as well. Basically, as long as it's organic, we could consider it for aging. So it's not specific to farming necessarily. So let's create that script. And at the top here, I can call it class name aging component so that it's easy to find and reference. So this is basically going to track the age of the object and it's going to allow the target of the aging component, which is usually the parent scene like corn seeds up here to transform into a new scene after we reach an age threshold. So let's add a few export variables so we can set that stuff. So at export var uh, target, and that is going to be a no 2D. And then here we're also going to have the current age of the aging component. So export var current age, and I'm going to have this start at 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is a float, but we don't need to define that because um, putting the default value kind of already hints at that. And then we'll have at export var age threshold. And we could default this to something like 1. Now, um, what your units for age is, is totally up to you for your game. This could mean one day, one year, or one minute of playtime. It could really be anything. So later, of course, we'll need some way to increment this on all of our aging components. Um, but the timing is totally up to you. And then uh, we need the next scene that we would transform into. And this is an optional variable, of course. So we could call this at export var next scene, and this will be a packed scene. So if you don't know what a packed scene is, that would be a TSCN file inside of your project. So coin growth one, coin growth two, and three are all packed scenes, and we can assign them in our aging component. So if I click on the aging component now, we'll see all of these variables we set up and we could assign them. Uh, so for the target, I want to make that optional as well. So when this is set, it's going to be the scene that will be replaced with the next scene. And I'm going to change the language up here as well. So can replace the target scene with a new scene. I think that's a little bit more clear in terms of uh, how Kiddo works. So when the target's not set, we're just going to use the default parent, which if we're adding a bunch of component scripts under here, is going to mean the coin seeds, the root of our scene. Um, so you won't always have to set this, only if there's a lot of hierarchy stuff going on here. Okay, so I'm also going to set some signals in this class. So a signal basically allows other scripts to hook into this script and uh, respond to certain events happening. So if you use C-sharp at all um, for Unity, for instance, it would be like a C-sharp event. Uh, they're just called signals in Godot. So I'm going to say uh, age changed, and we'll have the new age as a float and the last age also as a float just as parameters that we can do whatever we need to and then we can also have another signal for the age threshold being um, reached so we'll say age threshold reached and when the age threshold is reached a new scene gets spawned so we'll say new scene and this could be null um, if there is no next scene, but if there is a new scene, we want to pass that. So this would be a node2d since um, we're basically designing all of these scripts for the node2d, but you could easily use it for node3d as well. So how I'm going to handle this is that an outside script can just directly set the current age to a new age, uh, increment it by plus one or whatever. And then inside of here, we'll check if the age threshold is reached. So we could just use a setter function for the current age. So rather than write set current age, we'll just do this, add a colon at the end and do set value. The value is the new age we're being set to. And then uh, we can just come in here and I'll say if current age does not equal value, basically just checking that the age is actually changing, then we will set the current age to the value and then we're going to emit the signal age changed so emit signal age changed and we're going to have the new age which is uh, current age and then we have the last age so we need a local variable to save that last age before we change it so var last age equals current age and this happens before we set the value to the current age so we just pass that as a parameter and okay so if you don't know how the signals work basically any object can connect, call um, the agent component dot connect, 
with this signal and then whenever the signal is emitted by calling emit signal then other scripts can do something with that so I don't know if you need it for this tutorial, but I think that uh, having the signals there is just really helpful in the long run. You could look up observer pattern if you want to know more about that. But anyway, so uh, we changed the current age, and now we want to check if the threshold has been reached. So if current age is greater than or equal to the age threshold, then of course we have reached the age threshold. So I mentioned the new scene we want to actually instantiate this from the packed scene before we call age threshold reached. So we have to instantiate the packed scene. So inside of this code, I'm going to say var new scene, and that's going to be a node to be going to be equal to, and let's say great next scene. And that's going to mean we need a uh, new function that creates a node 2D. So let's go down here and say function underscore creates next scene. And uh, just so you know, the underscore is to indicate that this is private, as in not to be called from outside of the script, only to be used internally. And this is going to return a node 2D. Okay, uh, but before we write that, actually, I'm going to cut this bit and I'm going to say if next scene does not equal null. So we're actually only going to create the new scene if one has been set. So new scene equals, um, and I'm pasting that in, the create next scene. Then we can come out here and do emit signal age threshold reached new scene. So this will either be null or it'll be the new scene that gets created here or the node 2D that is the root of the new scene rather. So it can have child scripts and child nodes and all of that. Um, now, I also only want this to happen once. So let's create an internal variable var um, underscore threshold reached, and this will default to false. So here we're going to check and and underscore threshold reached does not equal true. And the reason for that is that we only want this code to run once. What we'll do inside of here is put underscore threshold reached equals true. So that'll mean basically this stuff runs and then it should never be able to come inside of here again unless we were to set this to false for some reason. Okay, so now let's work on creating the next scene. So when we're talking about the scene, we're talking about the root here, corn seeds turning into growth stage one and growth stage two and so on and so forth. So we need to take our object's position in the game world, um, probably the scale and rotation as well, and copy that over to the new object we just created. We also want to assign the new scene that replaces the old scene to the same parent. So for instance, if we had um, objects in world objects that we were replacing, we'd also want to assign those to the world object's parent because we're not changing anything else. We're just upgrading to that new scene. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is uh, instantiate the next scene. So I'll say var instance equals next scene dot instantiate. So easy enough. This takes the packed scene and turns it into an actual usable scene inside of the game world. But currently it has no parent assigned. So we need to get the parent of the target. So let's do target dot get parent and we'll say dot set child. And that's going to be setting it to the instance, if I have that right. Okay, so we get the parent, and we make the new instance a child of the uh, parent the same way that the target is. And um, I should also be just giving it the node 2D type. That'll make it easier to find things like uh, global position on the instance node. And then let's come down here to the bottom, and I'm going to do instance dot global transform equals target dot global transform so if i have this right this is basically going to be taking the position the scale and the rotation and assigning all of that to here rather than doing it for each individually okay so the instance has the parent okay so this might be all we need um oh we also have to return the instance right so this is our return type right here and that gets returned here so after we uh emit the signal the new scene we want to actually queue free on this scene and uh, not this scene but rather the target dot queue free so the target once again that would be usually the root node so like corn seeds or corn growth one once we upgrade the stage we want to remove the old stage 
So there's at least one other problem here, which is that uh, if we haven't assigned the target in the inspector, we don't have this otherwise the direct parent will be used thing to occur. So I'm going to go above the create next scene function and we're going to do function underscore ready. And uh, we're going to check if the target has been set. So if target equals null, then for the target, I'm going to do target equals get parent. Okay, so that means if we haven't set a custom target, our new target is going to be the direct parent, the corn seeds. And uh, we need the colon at the end of that if statement. Um, so now let's click on the aging component and we can see we have the current age zero, age threshold one. Uh, we don't have the target assigned. We could directly assign it to be corn seeds, but we don't have to. And the next scene is going to be corn growth one. So let's click here. I'm going to quick load. I'm going to search for uh, growth. And then let's get corn growth one. Now we can basically just copy this. I'm going to right click copy this component and uh, let's jump into the next scene. So I'm going to click here and open the next scene. And I'm going to right click here and paste in the agent component. Now going from seed to uh, sprout, we're saying it only takes one arbitrary age unit, but let's say it takes two to go from sprout to stage three. So I'll change the age threshold to two here. And let's change the next scene again. So I'm going to click here, quick load a scene. Let's look for growth and do growth two. Okay. And now we'll jump into here and I'm going to control V paste in the aging component. Let's say this time we need three age thresholds to, or three units to be reached for the age threshold to change. And we're going to actually click here and quick load the next growth level, which is three. Then we'll jump into that one more time. Okay, so the corn stage three is still going to age. So I'm going to paste in the aging component and we can say it takes three age units to become harvestable. So let's change the quick load next scene. And we'll do growth, growth three harvestable. Okay, so for the harvestable, um, this is actually not going to be changed by age anymore, but we're going to want to revert back to corn three. So by changing back into stage three, it'll be allowed to age again, and then we can make it harvestable after three units of age have, have passed. But in order to go from the harvestable version to the base stage three, uh, we're going to need um, some sort of resource node harvesting script, which I uh, wrote before. And I think it's okay to reuse that here, but we'll uh, get to that in a bit. And I'll also add in the ability to change back to um, the stage three as an addition to that script. Okay, so let's save all of these uh, corn growth scenes. And now there's two things we need to be able to actually age all of these aging components. Uh, one is we need to set up a way for all of these nodes to be recognized and found. So there are functions where you could just look through every single node in your trees. Uh, that's pretty inefficient. So I think a better way for right now uh, would be on ready. We're going to add every aging component to a aging component group or, or we could just call it an aging group if you want so so i think the function is add to group and we just give it a group name um so why don't we define that as a constant up at the top so if i say constant group name and we'll say equals to aging component okay okay so the reason for making this a constant is after the script loads we're not going to change it um Basically, we can go into the script to edit it, but during gameplay, we can't mess with a constant. So I'm going to paste that name into here. So we're going to add it to the group, group name, which is set to aging component. And you can just edit this line and change it to whatever you want if it makes more sense for your game. Okay, so now because every aging component is added to the aging component group, it should be really easy for another script to just look at every object inside of aging component the group and just run a function on all of them such as increasing their age so uh let's do that okay so i have like a main gameplay scene out here i have a bunch of ui stuff you don't really need to worry about that too much um, but what we're going to do is we're going to just add a button to the top right of our screen so this button will increment the age of everything that has an aging component so i'll right click add a child node and let's make a button and the button will say plus one age. And then uh, let's take this button and I'm just going to put it over there. Right. L let's run the game and see that the button is there. 
okay it is that's all that really matters in the ui side of things um so now let's give this button a script so i'm going to rename the button to be aging button and so i'll just right click here and we'll give it a new script i'll call it aging button underscore um let's put it in some kind of ui folder so I'll go back to the root ui and we could just kind of save it here sure so ui slash aging button and we'll create so this button like all buttons are going to do something when it's clicked so uh one way that you can connect to the signal the pressed signal of a button is on ready we can just do connect so this is connecting to itself and we're going to look for the signal pressed by the way this is basically how you would connect to those signals we wrote earlier in the signal component and as well except you would do something like aging component dot connect so you got to connect to the object but in this case we're connecting to ourself so that's why we don't need to specify a uh, object name before doing dot connect and so uh when pressed happens we run the callable on pressed okay so what is a callable that is a function we write so down here so function underscore on pressed and then we just do something whenever it's pressed okay so uh, let's add in a at export um var and we'll say age amount on press and we'll default that to 1.0 so if you want to change that okay now we can just click here and uh at the top oh well after the script actually works so if i pass here and i save it then now we have that variable up here at the top if you want to change the amount that each button press actually does. Anyway, uh, what we do on pressed is that we grab every aging component. So we'll say here for aging component, um, and I'll do lowercase underscore in, and let's get nodes and groups. So to do that, we do get tree. So this basically looks at the root tree of the scene. And then from there, we can get get nodes and group. And we need the group name, which is aging component. If you want, uh, we could just make that another constant. Or you know what? Um, an even better way. Uh, if you're using Godot for it, we can go over to aging component. Let's change this constant into a static var group name. Okay. So when we make it static, it means we can reference the class name in order to grab this variable. It's not individual to each instance of the class. It's basically stored in the class itself. So in aging button... Uh, we can just do aging component dot uh let's see what did we just call it group name okay will that actually work if they hit save uh okay so four nodes in the group okay colon and let's just pass save okay will that work hold on aging component group name i think this will work okay and if it doesn't um sorry that i'm just like throwing random ideas into this because it's not really necessary for the tutorial but hey uh hopefully it helps a little bit to learn these other things like static variables so the advantage here is that basically if we ever change this in aging component here that uh this variable is being referenced over here as well so we never need to change it inside of aging button because it's always going to be updated to whatever the group name is set in the class script okay so for each aging component first we want to check is it actually an aging component so if aging component is an aging component so we're checking the class type uh then we'll do some stuff other ways we could do something like push an error if there's like some random node in the group that shouldn't be there and we could say um aging component dot name we're gonna add in a uh, node is not an aging component so just kind of a message that lets us know hey there this class object is not actually an aging component so we can't really age it and it shouldn't be there all right now for the magic we do aging component dot current age and we plus equals the age amount on press so we just do this for every aging component they all increment at the same time everything basically ends up having the same age synced up now in the real game uh, I think you would have something like a world system that periodically ages everything rather than a button on the screen. But uh, you get the idea. It would basically be the same thing. Um, you just increase the age for all the aging components when you need to do it, whenever it makes sense for your game. Okay, now to clean up the script, we don't need this process function. Now I'm going to just throw in a few of these coin objects into the level. 
So let's bring in a corn seeds. Let's bring in a corn growth one, a corn growth two, a corn growth three. Throw in a harvestable one, sure, and some more seeds. Okay, so we have a bunch of corn objects, and they all have aging components. They're already at different stages of growth. Let's hit play. Let's run the scene, and uh, let's age them. So we'll go over here, and uh, actually, you can see that because we set things up differently, these area 2Ds for the um, seeds and the sproutling, we can walk right over them because the area 2Ds. But we can't walk over the uh, adult plants because those are static body 2Ds. So you can see these have physics collisions and these don't. So hopefully you understand the difference. Okay, let's age them. So I have plus one age. And we get an error because uh, I messed up a bit. So let's see, invalid call non-existent function set child and base node to D level. Uh, okay, yep, I think that's because it's add child, not set child. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. So let's uh, let's run the main game again and uh, let's do the aging. So plus one age. Oh, okay, now you can see the seeds changed to a sproutling. So everything has had one age added to it. This sproutling should transform before the other ones do. Plus one age. And that one transforms into its uh, stage two. And if we do plus one age, this transforms because it needed three to transform. And the uh, stage three became harvestable because it also needed three age. And uh, the rest of the seeds have reached the next stage as well. So if I keep clicking plus one age, plus one age, things are just going to keep evolving. And uh, eventually we end up with a bunch of corn that would be harvestable. So that's how you set up the organic aging part of uh your game world now when you call the aging function is really up to you if you're looking at the obvious example of stardew valley it would be when the uh game saves and the level churns um but you could just have like a world time system where periodically after like every half hour of playing the game everything ages or it could just be constantly updating if you want it to be but let's make these actually harvestable so in my previous tutorial on uh, resource gathering obviously i added tools like a pickaxe an axe and we can use those to swing at these and gather resource materials and those are added to the inventory which is displayed up here so um back then i uh made it so that different tools target different um objects in the world and basically we can just reuse that for here now i don't think i made like a sickle for harvesting these things and actually maybe you would just use the character's bare hands in order to harvest them but in this demo we're going to harvest the corn with a pickaxe so just bear that in mind it's uh just for demo purposes let's see if we need to add the harvestable script to the harvestable corn growth so i'm going to search my project for resource node dot gd and i'm going to drop that in here so as you can see this adds a bunch of stuff and it's uh somewhat complicated but not too bad um, so the starting resources is the amount that each node has before it would become depleted the pickup type is the object that gets spawned whenever we harvest so this would be the corn object the the physical corn item that we can pick up and add to our inventory we want to spawn that whenever we harvest from the node um, the node types um, i was using that to basically set how a object can be harvested so in this case uh like i said i want it to be mineable which i know doesn't make sense but you know video games so i'm going to search the project for the mineable tag and i'm just going to drop that in here so that was just something where when a uh, pickaxe which can harvest mineable targets looks at the resource node it would be able to check what tags it has and determine whether you can mine with a pickaxe or it needs to be harvested with an axe. And all that stuff was in a previous tutorial, so I'm not going to cover literally everything, um, but I will link it once again so you can check that out if you need more information. Otherwise, I'll also just be directly including these scripts and the uh, post on uh, Patreon and Ko-Fi. Okay, so uh, basically we've set our resource node as mineable and... Now we need to create a pickup item. So I'm going to search for my corn folder and we're going to right click here and create a new scene, uh, scene 2D, and I'll just call this uh, corn underscore pickup or pickup underscore corn, whichever you prefer. Let's hit save. I'll rename the scene node to be um, capitals on the main word. So capital C, capital P. And then I want to attach the uh, pickup script, which I wrote. And I'll, I'll be jumping into these scripts a little bit. 
Okay, so I added a pickup script to the coin pickup here. And what this will do is basically queue free on the coin pickup scene when it's picked up by a player. And then it would turn into an item resource that we would assign over here. And that resource is what actually gets stored in uh, the player's inventory. So I'm not going to dive too much into that concept here, but uh, basically that would be inventory management. You pick up the scene, the scene gets freed, and you add the item to a inventory class that you're using for inventory management in your game. So in this case, I'm using the uh, inventory classes I wrote for the grid builder plugin. But basically the concept would apply the same if you are writing your own inventory. Okay, and then the pickup area here is uh, the region that uh, we need the player to walk into in order for the object to be picked up and added to the inventory. So um, this root is a uh, static body 2D, but I'm going to add a child node and this is gonna be an area 2D. And in the area 2D, I'm gonna add a collision object so the collision shape to D and let's make this um, a circle shape or something and I'll, I'll shrink it. So I'll go over to shape and make five for the pickup radius. But this doesn't really make sense because we don't have a sprite yet. So I'm going to right click on the root, add a sprite to D and then inside of here, uh, let's uh, quick load the farming sprites. All right. Oh, wait, we need to actually make it a Atlas texture. That's why, because we need to select a region from here. So new Atlas texture, select this. And here we load the Atlas, which is farming sprites. And then we edit region and we select this little coin item over here. Okay, um, right. So now we can see that the collision shape actually matches the coin area. So the pickup is going to have it get added to the character's inventory. So if I jump into here, the, the way this is written, it uh, kind of relies on the grid builder plugin, but um, the item here is uh, the resource that's going to be added to the player's inventory. A resource is a file that exists in your uh, project files, but not a scene that you instantiate and you can play on. So it's just data basically. And then what's important is that you add it to the item container and then you queue free on the scene because once the item is picked up, it's no longer in the scene, it's in the inventory. So you remove it from the scene after adding the item resource to the inventory. So hopefully that makes sense. I think I'll just throw this script into the um, the uh, patron and Ko-Fi download as well, though it would only work as written if you're also using the grid builder plugin. So I would just strip this and edit it a bit so that it works with your own inventory system if you want to do that. Or you can just kind of um, pause the video and copy from the screen as you need. But either way, uh, the idea is we have the pickup script. So when the player walks over it, we can pick up the item. So now we need to create the item resource. So in farming, I'm going to right click, create a new resource type. So I have the base item um, class. I'm going to create that. And I am going to create that inside of farming. So I'll call this corn item or maybe item corn. Makes a little more sense. So this is a TRES file. Uh, a resource file saved in the project. And um, the base item here, it just is a resource that has these extra fields. So uh, defined just like any other resource would. A display name, which is how the resource would be represented in the game as a string. So I could call this coin. And then uh, texture is gonna be basically this sprite. I'm gonna reassign it here in an Atlas texture. And then let's load the farming sprites and select the region. So I'll grab this over there. And then tags here is just an array of generic resources. So assigning different resources to this resource is one way that you can categorize a resource. So basically, if I want to take another resource and I could call it like tag farming, then this can be considered a farming item or something like that. So let's take the stack maximum and make that uh, 9,999. So how many items can be put in one stack? Uh, it doesn't do anything by itself, but if you have another stack class, then you can check if the stack maximum has been reached and not allow it to grow any bigger. Okay, so I'm going to open up my um, actual level here and let's put in the pickup. So let's see, we have the coin pickup. I'll just drop one of these over here and maybe one over there. Okay, so if we hit play, then here we're going to see that uh, the base script needs to be a rigid body 2D. 
so let's actually open up the coin pickup and I think I need to right click change type this as a uh, let's see pickup so when I do that uh, we can see that we need a collision shape for the base node as well so actually we don't necessarily have to assign a uh, collision shape here uh, that just means that it can't collide but uh, what we actually care about here is the area 2d picking up the um, object so I'm going to rename this to be uh, pickup area so that it's more clear and then let's assign the pickup area into here. It, definitely the way I wrote the script was not perfect. Um, I'll say that for sure. And we want to assign an item that's going to be picked up. So let's grab the item corn. Okay, so now let's run the scene. And uh, we can see that they uh, fell due to gravity. So I'm going to click on here and make the gravity scale zero. Okay, so if we run the scene now, uh, we should be able to collect these um, corn over here. Um, and you can see it's being added to the uh, player's inventory. So it doesn't actually do anything in the game, and we're not going to make it do anything, but we have coin picked up. So now we just need to make it so these nodes will create the pickup, which allows us to pick up the pickup, and then we add the item resource to the inventory of the player. So let's go back to uh, coin3 harvestable, and uh, we have the resource node here. So... This was definitely the main script I wrote for that uh, resource gathering tutorial. So let's take a look through here. So the node types define uh, basically how the node can be mined. Starting resources is, is how many pickup items are inside of it that we harvest as we hit it with our uh, pickaxe. The pickup type is the scene that we're going to instantiate. That's the corn pickup. Um, depleted effect, you can add a uh, special effect when the node gets destroyed. And then the launch speed and launch duration. How fast do you want it to be uh, basically propelled away from the center of the base node um, as it gets hit and the pickups get launched. So that's not too relevant here, but extra stuff and uh, audio player for playing sounds. Okay, so now for the actual functionality of the uh, resource node as I wrote it before. Uh, when the resource count is set, if the count is less than zero, then basically we're going to play our uh, particle physics effects. And then we're going to put that effects position at uh, where this object is, the resource node. And we'll make sure that it's inside of the level with level parent .add child. And eventually after playing the audio, which we wait uh, for the audio play to be done finishing, then we will cue free on the resource node. So the node blows up, uh, our special effect plays, and then it removes itself from the scene. And that's how it's written for most objects. So I, I will change that a bit um, to have it uh, basically we'll be able to re-harvest the corn in a minute. The harvest function is ran by the pickaxe deciding to hit the harvestable node. So really anything could call the harvest function, but that's how we get the pickups to spawn. And then we remove the amount that gets spawned from the current resources and we can play a sound effect for the harvesting of the node. So when we spawn the resources, that's instantiating a copy of the pickup, and we add it to the level parent. We make sure that the position of the pickup starts at the position of the resource node. And then we call the launch method on the pickup. So uh, what that means is basically the pickup is going to move in a certain direction for a period of time before it can be picked up. Uh, but during that time, it's just moving away from the resource node. Um, so to show what that actually looks like already, uh, let me just go back and hit a rock. So you can see that when we hit the rock, it moves away from the uh, resource node. And after it gets far enough away, it can be picked up. Um, and then the resource node, when it runs out of resources, it explodes to get the particle physics. It removes itself from the scene. And that's the, basically the idea that that had. So if I hit this right now, um, we need to assign the pickup onto the corn. So let's click on the corn and we will assign the pickup type so quick load and i'm just going to search for corn so we want corn pickup okay and we might want to use the depleted effect so this any gpu particle physics that you want to use so so i i was just making one that i called uh depleted resources explosion um from the other tutorial so you could use that as like a template for starting this uh tutorial video if you want to go ahead and grab that i know i'm saying that kind of late then an audio player for playing the harvest sound effect. So I, I don't know. I'll just add that in here. Um, it's definitely an extra, not super needed. So a audio player 
and then let's grab the sound effect. So uh, let's see the pickaxe sound effect. I think that's the one we want. And then I'll assign the auto player here so that the script can play the sound effect from this audio stream player. Okay, now if I hit play, we go to the um, chord node, we can hit it F and you can see we harvest it with the pickaxe and we can pick up our corn. If we age these other corn um, instances, we can harvest them as well, like so. You can even harvest two at once, apparently. And that kind of is the gist of how things would work. So last thing I want to do for this tutorial, which I know is going pretty long, is uh, edit this script a bit so that we can harvest a corn stage three harvestable and return it to corn stage three where it can age again and we'd be able to be harvested. So let's add in a couple extra export vars. So I'll do export var change scene on depletion. And this will just be uh, false by default. So the other scenes that already have it aren't going to do that. And then we'll have export var change scene, which is a packed scene. Okay, so now if I was uh, going to the script here, we have these new fields and we'd want to check change scene on depletion and we want the change scene to be the corn growth uh, three. So we're reverting back to growth three and then we'll age into harvestable again. So um, that doesn't do anything yet. We need to add a little bit of extra code here. So I'll go down and here we'll say, and then here we'll say if change scene on depletion then we'll do some different stuff otherwise we'll do the queue free so down here before we queue free we want to do if change scene on depletion then uh if that's the case we're gonna create a new variable change instance that's gonna be equal to the change scene dot instantiate all right and then we need to set its position and parent to this object's position and parent. So this should actually look a lot like the aging component. Um, and really, we could just pretty much copy this bit. Or actually, I'll just copy all of it. Why not? Um, let's add it to the bottom. And we'll say, create change scene here to the instance. So we're going to generate it. And then we'll have the instance. So the target.global transform, um, this doesn't have a target. We're going to change it into its own transform. So just need to remove that. Instance.global transform equals global transform. Instead of uh, change scene.instantiate, we just call create change scene. Okay, and I remember the colon for the if. Now down here, uh, we need to rename this variable change scene because our uh, variable names are a little different here. And we're going to add the instance to the target parent. No, we're going to actually get the parent from this class specifically. And then we're going to add the child. So we're adding it to the parent. And then we return the instance. Okay, so uh, we have that created. And I think that's actually all we need to do. So we're still queuing free. Uh, we basically create the replacement scene. And then we queue free. So what you might decide to do is uh, remove the depletion effect as well. Or you could change it into a different one that makes more sense than a literal explosion um, because it's not exploding anymore. It's uh, just changing form from a harvestable corn into a unharvestable corn. So uh, let's remove that effect and we'll hit play and test this out. So I'll go up to the corn and let's hit F. Okay, it didn't quite work. So this part should only actually run if we have a depleted effect. So if depleted effect does not equal null, uh, then we'll run that. So that was definitely a bug in the original script. So let's hit play once again, and we'll test this out. I'll go over to the corn, or F, and change scene that instance. Okay, wait. And uh, that's giving us an error because we did not assign the change scene, I think. Okay, it appears to be there. So that's interesting. Um, let's try reassigning it. So quick load, corn, corn growth three. All right, and I'll try running it. Let's go up to the corn. Let's hit F. And it did not work once again. Okay, so change scene.instantiate. If we go down here, we can see change scene is null. 
Okay, so I was doing a little digging around in the background, and it turns out if you have um, scenes that link into other scenes with packed scenes, but then those scenes link back. In the case of, uh, let's say, corn plant growth three linking to uh, three harvestable, and then harvestable three linking back to plant growth three, then that is going to cause um, some cyclical uh, reference errors. So uh, what I guess we need to do is instead of directly linking the packed scene um, on the resource node, we can give it a path. Okay, so for this uh, at export var replacement scene um, as a packed scene, instead I'm going to make that a at export file. And we're going to drop the packed scene there. So let's uh, click here and see. Okay, now we're choosing a file from our project. So the replacement scene. Um, let's jump into farming and then corn three growth. So obviously this has some downsides. So like uh, this is now a string path. Um, if we ever change where that's located, it's going to break. Um, it's it's actually going to break the connection to that. But on the upside, if uh, for whatever reason we accidentally have our scenes linking together, it's not going to completely break the files and, you know, cause all kinds of errors where we can't even open them up for editing normally. Uh, so I, I think that's a worthwhile trade. So the replacement scene is now a file path. And we'll go down to the bottom of our script. And uh, we want to instantiate. So can we just instantiate directly like that? Uh, so I'm not sure if that's going to work. Uh, we could just, you know, go ahead and run it and try. So I'll go ahead this. Okay, so down here at the bottom, um, let's try load on the file path, which I believe is going to take this and turn it into a scene where we can instantiate it. So we're loading the file path and then we instantiate whatever we load. So let's hit play and uh, give that a test. So I'll go over here, we'll hit play and yeah, okay, cool. That actually worked. So as you can see, the corn transformed into its other state so we can do one two three and increase the age so now we'll be able to hit these and they're transforming into their growth stage three and we collect all the corn okay and we want to age them so we're going to keep aging them until they can be harvested again and yep okay basically we have harvestable corn uh, i do need to add the uh, aging back in to corn growth three and make that a three but yeah basically uh that is working there okay so i think that's pretty much a good stopping point for this tutorial uh we have the ability to age our crops into a harvestable state gather all the corn that we need collect it so we have the uh, pickups working and an inventory to add it to and then we can uh, keep churning the age of the game until we get more harvestable corn crops and we keep harvesting it. So obviously we could build upon this by uh, making it so that we can place the seeds uh, for the farming. So I suppose I'll just do that real quick. Um, so this is just a quick demonstration of the uh, build system. But I'll quickly just throw in a uh, seeds resource that we can place into the scene. So basically a placeable is how, what I was calling them in uh, the grid building system. So I'm going to create a new placeable. And this is just an extra. So let's say placeable corn seeds. Okay. And inside of here, corn seeds, the icon as an atlas. Let's quick load the farming sprites going to edit the region, select the corn seeds, and in the packed scene we want to instantiate. So that's going to be corn seeds.tscn. And we'll give it a tag. So I'm going to um, need to create a new tag for farming. So categorical tag, tag farming. Inside of here I can say farming. And let's grab a farming icon. Okay, I need to do an atlas texture for that, actually. So we do quick load farming sprites. Nope, that wasn't right. Um, okay, quick load, but for the atlas farming sprites. 
edit the region and we'll use this little sprite as the icon, the sprout. Okay, close that. And now that we have the tag, I can add it to my UI. So gameplay, put TSC in, in the placement selection UI, let's do the tag. So the tag is farming. I'll just drag it in there. And then for the placeable, we have uh, the corn seeds. I won't bother adding a um, placement rule to this or any tags or anything. Uh, let's just go ahead and hit play and test that out. So in the build menu, I'll be able to go over here to farming. Okay, and it's not in there yet. Uh, of course, that's because I did not assign the tag. So we need to actually put in the tag of... So down here, tag farming, I drop that in. Okay, now it should actually be filtered into that uh, list. So we're going to hit B to build, go over to farming, hit farming, corn seeds, and let's place in our corn seeds. And we can age it. And we'll just age a whole bunch. And uh, there is all of our corn. Okay, so that is it for this demo on really a kind of a rough overview on how to set up farming within a 2D Godot game. We have harvesting a resource. We can pick up the uh, item, add it to the inventory, and I'm going to age the crops. So they all have the ageable component, and you can see they go through different stages. And once they're at the harvestable stage, we can harvest them. And these uh, corn crops are repeat harvestable. So as they age again, then they'll get their corn back, and we can continue to harvest, as you can see there. And um, just as a tie-in with uh, my Grid Builder plugin, of course, we'd want to be able to plant seeds on the ground. So I didn't set any special rules for where we could place these seeds. So as you develop things, you'd probably want to have a specific tile for um, actually placing your seeds down. But the general idea is there, being able to age our corn into their adult state and collect the corn. So I've been Chris. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful, even if there were some gaps here and there and... Um, some of the more complicated mechanics, like adding in an inventory system, of course. But it's really only possible to cover so much in one video without it becoming, like, basically creating the entire game. So, uh, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end. And I will see all of you in my future Godot content.